How's it going everyone? It's Dagenstein here bringing you another fighting game video and today we're going to be doing a character overview guide for Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Now this game just got re-released for PC, Steam, and consoles such as Nintendo Switch and of course PlayStation. So we are going to be doing every single character just going around talking about exactly what they bring to the table and seeing if they're a character that you want to play. So starting off, we're going to be talking about Narukami, who is basically your standard protagonist character within this game. So he's going to, of course, have those nice spaced out buttons. He's going to have the fireball for you. He can do it in the air. He do it on the ground. He has like nice good buttons. Like I said, of course, he has a nice dragon punch. As you can see, he also once again has tools for that, just about everything. So he has a mix up so he can go for like quick overhead or he can use that version. He has a faint version of it as well. He has a pretty good full screen low he could use he also has the ability to command grab you as well and he could combo off of it he did have the ability to combo off of his throw as well but they took that away from him so you have to spend meter to combo off that or just use the command grab to basically combo your opponents narakami also got access to some good air options such as his jb which is going to be a double hitting overhead his j2b which is a very nice button especially when it's spaced out it can definitely cover nice ranges he also has access to a dive kick right here this can be made plus uh, when you do it right so this is a plus dive kick you can make happen as well he got some pretty nice uh, persona moves so he has his 5c uh, this can be uh, run canceled as well his 5b could be back dash canceled his 2c can also be back dash canceled he has some nice options too his 2c can also be run canceled as well as you can see and uh, his 5d is his double hitting move and it has a follow-up you could do uh, you could pretty much delay it for a while as well and then like do his other persona moves so he has a nice pretty good options when it comes to using his persona and like creating space and stuff with it and disjoints it from himself to create situations so narakami is going to be a good character for you to play if you just want a standard character that is going to introduce you to the game very well and is going to have tools to deal with just about every situation with some nice mix-ups and of course some good pressure to boot so yosuke is going to be your fast ninja type character within the game he is going to have like really good speed so he's going to be like one of the fastest characters in the game uh he's going to have like very high mobility he has access to projectiles as well in the air as you can see right here he has this unique ability of being able to do this uh like flip sequence and he can always like cancel it into another one like this so i believe there's a certain amount he can do but he could do this a fair amount of times to like basically throw off the timing of your opponent trying to anti-air them he can also come down for a low whenever he wants like that there's some pretty unique things uh his throw also has the ability to uh fix a uh, stylus element so this is going to be poison that he actually inflicts on the opponent and when he goes into his super mode which is his awakening super his auto combo actually changes so it becomes his like slash attack as you can see he also has access to a uh unique command grab that he could do and this is going to actually uh cause panic so panic is going to actually confuse the opponent and make it to where their inputs are backwards so forward is now back and back is now forward so it's going to make it very weird for your opponent to try to block you especially when you're like doing stuff like this and you're flipping around and stuff it's going to make it very confusing and hard for them to deal with you with those type of things he also has some pretty decent uh project our persona moves where he can send them at you and like do uh attacks like this um so you know he has some decent ones as well but he is going to be very fast and a very tricky to actually pinpoint and pin down once he gets started so if you like characters with a bunch of air options and fast movement then yosuke will definitely be the character for you so yukiko amagi is going to be the zoner of the game so she's going to have access to different zoning tools and different spaces that she can actually control them so her b button is going to be dedicated to her actual main zoning tool which is going to be her fan toss the 5b version she can put out uh, two of them like this she can also slow them down by doing back b so 4b and a faster version by doing 6b and you, like i said you can do two of them by doing b b at the same time you could cover different angles in the air by doing like 1b 2b and 3b and the same thing in the air so there's like a, a j 1b a j 2b and a j 3b uh, to cover different angles you can only do one of these fans now because it's actually a projectile for an anti-air is actually more susceptible to being jumped in so there's a little bit more people could jump in on her a little bit more than other characters uh so she does have a pretty weak anti-air game also her because her dp is this like charge which is a guard point is also a pretty weak dp as in like people can touch it and then realize they touch it and then like do something before you actually hit them because it's guard point this is going to allow her to regenerate life as well now her main gimmick besides her actually being a zoner is this fire gaze down here so she can level herself up and once she gets to level three it used to be level six but now at level three she gets access to this very strong phoenix move right here and the main thing that the fire levels do is it increases the damage 
of her actual fire based attacks so if we take it back real hit right quick and we do this attack you see it does like 991 damage now we level it up all the way uh to like say level 99 uh level 9 you'll see that it does quite a bit more damage like a thousand more damage for level 9 which level 9 is the highest it can go so basically everything you do uh from your supers to your specials everything that uses her fire which is a lot of her attacks will now gain a damage bonus based on the level that you're at so she's going to be always zoning using her persona uh to keep the opponent out like this uh you know comboing from there and then trying to fit in levels where she can to where when she gets a good hit she can really make it hurt and when she really wants to get the opponent in she has super that actually pulls the opponent in um with her Meragi. so she has a super that like this can pull you out or it can pull you in so she has pretty good ways to like try to get the opponent in if she wants them in uh for some type of mix-up and stuff she also does have access to some unblockables as well because her persona move is an overhead and she does have this which is like a low so she has some ways to set up certain unblockable setups and stuff uh with her armor break because she has an armor break as well which will help her actually do her unblockable so she has ways to definitely make some tricky mix-up situations on top of her zoning so if you're looking for a zoner that can cash out on some serious damage once they get their unique game plan going then yukiko would definitely be the character for you so chia is going to be a pretty standard in your face brawler so she's all about getting in your face doing pressure and of course cashing out on damage whenever she can so she has some really good pressure uh some pretty good buttons when it comes to that uh like this uh 5a here her 5c is pretty good her jc is also really good her jc beats anti-airs it has a property on it because this game uses head property this button actually just stuffs anti-air so if a person tries to anti-air this button it will just win um when you actually do it right so this button would just straight up be anti-airs even though there's supposed to be head involved yukiko once again is not the best example just because of how her fan works so it is a little bit different for her but for the most part people will not be able to anti-air this button reliably unless they have something else that they are trying to use that can go through it now the main gimmick of chia is going to be her power charge super so this has three levels which is the red one you see now then there is the yellow level and then there is the blue level now they changed it from where it used to be before it used to be a bar now it's a sequence of certain amount of moves so you get five sequence of special moves that you can use and it's upon when they actually contact the opponent now if you do a super it will use all of them and basically it basically increases the damage for all of these moves that you do but the thing that it really allows her to do is allow her to actually do touch a death type combo so once you get to like blue and you do super say something like this look at the damage that it actually does like massive amounts of damage as you can see a uh, huge amount of damage so her ability to basically do a lot of damage very quickly is going to be the main thing she's going to do she also has very good awakening super so this meteor super is also good for combos but also good for allowing her to actually push her way in so she could just do this super and kind of the opponent just has to hold it and then she could just sort of run in behind it so she has some really good supers that not only allow her to get more damage opportunities but also allow her to come in and of course have potentialities for touch of death combos so very strong character once she gets in and once she gets started with her power charge stuff a very very strong character once she gets started right on top of you all right so talking about teddy teddy is going to be your item throw character in the game so he's going to have two different sets he's going to have his 5d and 2d which are going to throw out the items now compared to other item throw characters where there's rng involved his items are actually already in a set order for two different sets so he has a 5d and a 2d set and are going to be in set order so basically playing teddy you're going to know or have to memorize the order of which items that you're throwing and this is going to change the game plan of how you're going to either approach neutral or di the different type of mix-ups that you're going to be trying to go for when you're playing this character now this character being the item throw the character and having a bunch of wild different stuff he's also going to have a lot of access to many different stylus elements that are within the game he already has two on his normals which are going to be this this is going to be fear fear makes it to where every attack is a fatal counter which is the biggest uh, counter hit in the game and then he has access to another one which is poison uh on his uh 214a so 214a is going to be the poison 214b is going to be the fear and uh yeah this is going to be things he could do his dp is also going to be a counter and his counter also puts a stylus element on the enemy so if we do his counter here uh like you see right there so now this puts rage on them so basically it gives them a damage increase but now they cannot block so it's 
plenty of different things that this character could actually do and it gets very wow once he gets started he also has access to like a teleport he can go through the tv he go through the top one and like go like that or he could go through the bottom one and depending on where the tv is he will appear behind you and stuff like that too he also has access to like a, a deflate and stuff like that so you could deflate uh as you can see uh he could do it he can move around while he deflate he has a lot of different crazy weird things so if you like playing item throw characters or characters that are unorthodox and have their game plans changed dynamically through the situations that come up then teddy is definitely the character for you so kanji is going to be the grappler of the game so kanji of course as the grappler of the game is definitely going to be much slower on the ground you can see so he's going to have a little bit of trouble trying to get in on his opponent but the devs did give him a few tools to try to actually help him get in so he has access to the shoulder tackle move he can shoulder tackle to his opponent and he can try to use his persona moves from there and uh get stuff to happen from full screen away and then he also have access to these electricity moves so his 5d and 2d are going to be the electricity move like this and the 2d one is going to be this so the 5d is going to go further than the 2d uh the 2d one goes about like mid-screen now the cool thing about this move is you can actually press it a couple of times and this will allow you to basically sort of delay it so you can actually come in on your opponent so you can actually sort of like either combo it like that or you can use it to where like you sort of make them stuck and then you get a chance to come in if they block it and this is actually going to put them in shock state so shock state make it to where your opponent can only move by using the universal options which is going to be the roll or the uh hop so this is the only way they can move once they are in shock so it allows you to actually come in and actually try to start some pressure on your opponents and try to go for like some tick throws or some other type of mix-ups of course also being a grappler of the game he's going to have access to command throws so he has access to a command throw that allows him to actually do a follow-up that allows him to come in he also can send his persona in the air so he also has an anti-air one and he actually has one that's delayed like this this is going to actually hit the opponents as soon as they're in the air so you can actually do stuff like this with like the sp version and actually do like follow-ups with it um so this is a combo you can do uh something like that so this is uh you know a standard combo you'll see uh for this character something like this he can also do the combo in the corner as well so he can combo off his command throw in the corner with the 2b as well so something like this is something that works for him so he has access to do like combos off his command throws given the situation spinning meter mid screen or just getting the command throw in the corner allows him to do it he can also combo from his super i believe as well so this is command grab super this is going to be a fully invul command grab super you could do and uh he could get access to like some like wow shenanigans off that too so of course he's going to be the character that you want to play if you want to command grab your opponent to death if you want to instill the fear of command grabs he is definitely going to be a person he also has another unique move to actually come in and this is going to be this attack so this is going to be an air grab that can actually be ducked your opponent has to duck this to actually get past it but it does go full screen in the sp version which is the 25 meter version does track your opponent pretty well so this could catch your opponent off guard if you see them doing something then you can do this and catch them and then get a full uh on conversion from that and then of course start your pressure from there all right so now to talk about show so there's show and then there's minazuki so show is the one without the persona and minazuki is the one with the persona now the difference between the two obviously is show doesn't have a persona so where his persona normals are he has access to another normal uh which is going to be another sword normal and he has access to this sort of like phase through move so attacks just go through him when he does this and he could do this from any normal because it's considered like a normal now he also has a unique ability of being able to cancel his special moves into dashes but he also can do these dashes uh anytime because they're a special move but he can do like his reka moves and then press the button of the actual move that he wants for the actual teleport and he can teleport in that direction even though he's already in the middle of something so he can do this and sort of create his own different types of mix-ups on top of already having access to what we were just talking about which is this phase three move so he could try to use that as well now the cool thing about his actual teleport is it actually can steal the corner so that's something you do have to worry about not a lot of teleports can actually steal the corner his actually can both of them in the air and the ground actually steal the corner so that's something you do have to worry about when you actually are fighting this character so if you want a character that has some decent mix up when it comes to his normals have like a cool phase through thing so you could play like a little bit of a mind game and can steal the corner from your opponent then minazuki or show is going to be the one for you now minazuki is the one you're probably going to see more often than show minazuki has a few more things up his sleeve so he's going to have access to some unique teleports as well so he has access to teleports that go in front 
uh he has one that goes in the back like this they are overhead teleports too so this is something you're going to have to worry about so you can go in front like i said you go behind you he has access to a command grab now this command grab actually steals your opponent meter and gives it to you as you can see he losing meter when you uh, actually do that so it actually steals their meter and you gain some of their meter he also has access to projectile so he has this like projectile that goes like really fast and he has this like sort of slower one that he can do as well so he has two projectiles he can do this is going to be ducked but it's a little bit slower you can follow behind it and this is going to be a faster one uh and these are pretty much the main tools he pretty much has uh they both have pretty good normal they both have like some of the same normals like this normal very good normal uh jb is also going to be a very good normal for both of them uh, just pressing this button right here this covers a lot of good space it's a double hitting move as you can see uh so this is going to be a very good move for this character uh he has some pretty good persona moves too uh stuff like this go behind you like this so you know he can definitely create some nice uh pressure string that can catch people off guard and you could go into teleports at any point and like restart your pressure they both also have access to a Rekka, so he has access to it as well as you can see uh like that and the last hit is an overhead you can special cancel it with the uh ex version and make it a little bit faster as well so he has access to some pretty unique things on top of having these teleports now once again his teleport actually does not cross up so this is going to still be something that people can uh block it's not going to take the corner away from the opponent even though it is one that goes behind it is not going to take the corner so that's just something that only show can do so just keep that in mind all right so yukari is going to be another strong zoner within the game so she's going to have a very good keep away game she's going to be tossing arrows uh she could do it at different angles like this or like this um now her main thing that she's going to be doing is actually she can toss her arrows through these orbs and this is going to allow it to actually like home through so you see that it's actually going to make it to where they actually track the opponent so no matter if you get you gotta get, get a arrow in there and as long as you get a arrow through there they will track on to the opponent so if you get all three in there when you do stuff like this then they'll all track on them and this is going to be a main thing of her game plan of her like her type of zoning so you can do this with single arrows as well you do this in the air and like it'll track down you can also have like a bunch of flips and stuff so she has very good movement and mobility these sort of arrows from this can actually do stylus elements too so she could do charm so charm is going to make it to where you actually steal the opponent meter and then you have access to a mute as well so this is going to do mute so silence this means the opponent can't use their persona so she has access to some nice things like that of course she has like these bombs as well as you could do and she has access to a pretty good super as well so she has access to a uh, tornado super so this is going to put the opponent in a lot of block stun and allow you to actually go for some crazy mix-ups at this time so she has some pretty good strong offense she has really good damage actually and like i said some very good mobility on top of being able to actually inflict a bunch of actual uh status elements which is really good for her not only can she put her normal arrows through it, but she can also put her special arrows so if you're doing your special moves and stuff you can actually put these through there as well and they'll actually track as well so there's plenty of different ways she has to actually put stuff through it and have it tracked near the opponent so she's going to be very good at be, being able to do stuff like that allowing her to actually keep the pressure on from full screen and then when she actually needs to come in she actually has some pretty good mix-ups she can actually do as well so if you're a fan of baseball then junpei is definitely your man he's all about the baseball so he has a baseball mechanic so anything that does anything with his bat he is going to be doing something and is going to allow him to actually have something happen so if he whiffs with his back he will get a strike as you see and then strikes will allow him to get it out if he gets two so i got two outs if i do it again then he'll be penalized and he will lose some of the bases now if attack of the bat is actually blocked he gets the ball four of them so as you get three one he get a base and then after this happens every so often he will eventually get a uh, score. So the main thing he wants to do is to get uh, 10 of these. Once he gets 10 of these, he gets access to his victory cry, which is the main thing he's trying to do. So once he's in victory cry, he starts glowing yellow and he gets access to his clean hit mechanic. So clean hits is going to be a unique mechanic to this character that allows him to actually hit more damage based on the spacing that he hits his moves with. So he's going to be a character where you got to know the spacing and the timing of certain combos and actually to have these clean hits ha happen and this is going to allow him to get more damage and more hits done to be able to do combos that weren't naturally possible or get more damage before so this is going to be something he's definitely going to be doing on top of this after you get 10 bases every other 10 bases you get will allow him to increase 
is HP regen and his SP regen. So he actually regens his meter and his HP. And every 10 that he gets will allow him to increase that amount. He also gets a damage increase or for every other 10 bases that he get as well. Now, this mechanic is something that's also going to be good for him because this is a mechanic that will stay around for the entire match. So it won't go away. This is a permanent buff to the character for the match and it won't go away for that entire time. So he can use it and actually just go crazy. This is when he becomes a real character. Besides this, he is going to have a few problems for sure. Uh, he's going to have, of course, uh, he's not going to have like the best DP. He uh, has like he's pretty honest as far as his pressure game goes. So he has nothing crazy and stuff like that. And his damage output outside of being out of his mode is not the best. So he's going to get his main tools when he actually gets victory cry mode. And this is why you're always going to be shooting to try to get this. Last thing about Junpei, he actually can reflect projectiles. So this is going to allow him to actually get a batting score, as you can see. And it's going to allow him to actually help himself when it comes to dealing with zoning. All right, so talking about Labras. So Labras is going to have the unique mechanic of being a momentum-based character. So she is going to have to basically play around this axe level. There's going to be different levels of it. So it starts off gray, then it goes blue, and then it starts off as green, and it could go to yellow and then red. So red is going to be the final level, level five. And this basically happens uh, once you start doing a certain amount of like combo potentiality. Like once you start doing combos and stuff like that, once you start getting hits on your opponent, eventually your axe will go red, and this will allow you to get this status. Now here. You will start doing much more damage on stuff so things just start doing more damage and you could cash out on it with your like super and cash out for a lot more damage than what you would normally get so she basically is like a character that is momentum based and then like has a cash out super so she also is going to have pretty good uh like pressure strings and stuff like that and like mix-ups and stuff she has like access to like overheads and stuff like that she has access to uh pretty gimmicky stuff as well like she has access to an unblockable super like this she has access to this her dp is also guard point so everybody else has a dp that is going to be involved but hers is going to have guard point and if you charge it fully it actually become unblockable as well and i believe she can actually combo off of it off certain situations as well so this is something that you have to keep in mind um she is going to be a little bit weaker on defense just because she doesn't have that invincible uh thing but she also has like once again other mix-up opportunities that she can go for she can do like chain moves pull herself in and she could go for like a, a low or something like that from this or she can go for like uh an overhead so she has many different ways to try to open her opponent up when it comes to her uh attacks and stuff like that and she also is not going to be a character that really relies on her persona too much so she does have persona attacks that you're going to be doing in like for combos and stuff like that but she's not too persona reliant as like some other characters so if you do get your cards broken which you see she only got three is not the end of the world for her so this is another uh, benefit for playing this character is you don't have to worry about using your persona as much as some other character now shadow labras is going to be the unique shadow character in the game besides the other shadows which we'll talk about later so this character is a separate character from the other shadows and she basically has her persona out at all times and this makes it to where she actually can get persona broken just by simply having a persona hit so if you see like if i press a button here i can actually hit the persona and this will make it to where it actually gets broken so she has to actually make her persona manually guard so the persona has to manually guard and stuff like that now she can control her persona in unique ways uh separate from her and this is why she's going to be like the uh, puppet character of the game so the persona can do a bunch of different things and she could just sort of do her own thing while the persona is out all at the same time this is going to make some pretty unique situations that's only unique to her because of this style of persona that she has so if you want a character that has really good mix up because of this then this is definitely the character now she does have a uh, very low life so she does have that and she's definitely going to be one of the harder characters to play so that's something also to keep in mind so what would shadow labras be without talking about her super which is one of the best in the game the title no Machia super so this super when she does this when she's in awakening she can input a series of attacks that the persona could do so the persona has a few attacks they could do it could do like this punch move they could do like this laser it could do this like ground pound move and during the sequence of when she has her hand in the air like that you can input the moves now there's two different sets you can do there is the one where they stay in front and there's the one where they automatically go behind you so you have an opportunity to try to mix your opponent up three times before the super goes off and then on top of the super going off you have another chance 
before the actual activation because you could go for a cross up or hit them with like a mix up opportunity so it'll go like low or overhead and then after the freeze happened they will pop up in the air and because of that you can continue to combo even after they get hit by this so once they get hit by this you can still combo them because you are free to do whatever you want so it's a very strong super for like mix-ups on top of getting just a bunch of damage opportunities and because it gives you a free sandwich for 50 meter on top of three chances to do something to your opponent it's a lot of good chances that you're probably going to hit them with something and then of course you get the combo afterwards so very very strong super one of the best and it is very degenerate outside of like trying to like do cross-ups the only way to save yourself is basically cornering yourself that way you can't get crossed up and it makes it to where it's a little bit more manageable but that tells you how strong it is pretty much that you have to corner yourself in order to make the mix up a lot less scarier so talking about mitsudu who was my main character in the last version of the game this is going to be your standard neutral poke character who has a nice strike throw game to boot so she's going to have access to this very long reaching 5a this is going to be a very important tool for this character now universally they made it to where because this tool is so good they made it universally to where everybody in the game can pretty much sweep under this tool so you have to use it very very smartly you can beat other things that like the sweeps and stuff like that with stuff like this that like her charge b or using her 2a and stuff like that so you can beat the tools that other people are trying to use as far as the sweep you use your own 2a as well so there's ways to beat it but you just have to use this tool smartly but it's a very very strong tool so this is going to be like her party starter pretty much as far as like what she's trying to do um she has access to pretty good combos uh once they're crouching and stuff especially she can like pretty much send them to the corner she has access to this lunge move so this is going to be good she also has access to a status effect so she has a few she has the access to uh cause panic which we talked about before which switches the opponent's uh back and forward inputs and she has access to uh freeze so freeze is going to be this the opponent basically has to shake out of the freeze to break out of it so that is going to be something that's going to be on the opponent to do if they don't shake out fast enough even if the combo is illegitimate you can still get a combo on your opponent because they didn't shake out fast enough so it's going to be up to your opponent to actually break out of the ice fast enough before you actually do an illegitimate combo on them she also can control the neutral pretty well she has access to these whips moves so this move is pretty good it actually loses the crouching though as you can see uh she has one that like actually is an anti-air and she has one that she can do in the air like this so she can pull the opponent near her and she can like uh do combos from there as you can see she also access to uh modern Conan, which is going to be a charm so she has access to three basically styles of them so this is going to be the one that takes your opponent meter and give it to her so she has access to some pretty good ones as you can see uh, this poke that I show you is going to be a low. It's a full screen load that she can do uh, like this. Uh, you don't really see this much often, but it is something that you will see once in a while. Once again, she does have access to these uh, full screen lunges and stuff. She can change the trajectory of how far it goes. So like she can make it to where it doesn't go that far. Or she can make it go pretty far and she can charge the B version as well. So just like that. So she can make it to where she gets uh, better combo damage opportunities if she like does this. Uh, it actually has more hits done on it a little bit so you can actually do a few more things on it depending on like what how you hit it and stuff like that so it also changes things like that speaking of her strike throw she is going to be one of the characters that can actually combo off her throw so she got access to unique combos like this a uh, few other characters can actually get combos off her throw but she is going to be one of the ones that can definitely take full advantage of it she also has access to a pretty good mix-up uh meter mix-up which is going to be jb so she could do this rising like this and then she can uh one more cancel it like this and get a full conversion so she basically has access to a uh, pretty good 50 50 like this uh that's going to mess up a lot of people because it is pretty fast so she can do this pretty reliably and then come down for a full combo and it forces crouching so she can actually get a crouch confirm from it so it's going to be very good for her one thing to keep in mind about misudu is she's a little bit more meter reliant than other characters because she in order to do a lot of her like basic combos she's going to have to spend 25 meters for this move right here this is going to allow her to pick up and she can continue to combo from there so she's going to have to do this move in order to do a lot of her combos especially in the corner this is basically how she's going to get everything started is by doing something like that in order to get her combo started 
So if you want a character that excels in the neutral, that has pretty much good tools to like whip punish your opponent and stuff like that, and has some pretty good damage to boot when it comes to her supers and abilities and stuff, this would be the character for you. Just keep in mind that she's going to be pretty relying on like meter in certain situations and that her 5a can be low profile so you have to play around these tools smartly otherwise other people will take advantage of it so akihiko is going to be the boxer of the game and as the boxer of the game he is going to be a close-up monster so he's all about getting these cyclone levels we could get through his uh right punches so if he do these like hook punches he could get it if he does these like type of weaves he can do it and he got up to five levels and every time he gets a level the properties of these moves change and he get access to more damage so for example if he does a super normally this is how his super, super really looks but if he gets it all the way up to level five all of a sudden he gets a lot more damage on it so he gets way more damage opportunities and he could change the property so this is how his throw looks normally if uh we do a throw here and this is how his throw will start looking once he gets to level five and he does a throw so he get access to like a launcher state so he gets way better things once he gets his level up and this is going to enhance the way he can mix people up so he has this overhead from his persona now he doesn't use his persona as much as others but he does have access to this and he can start his pressure off with this this kill rush combo so with this he can go into different things he could go into uh this so he can reset with a throw off block or something like that or he can weave back out to like face something out or he could weave back in and then go for a low instead or he can weave back in uh and go for this he can stay out and then go for this move so he can do a bunch of different things with stuff like that he also has access to a counter move so if he wants to play in a way where he wants to read what the opponent is going to do he can go for the counter and the counter will allow him to actually do counter attack follow-ups which allow him to actually get levels and stuff too now when it comes to akigo weaves these are not for show as he actually will go through certain attacks when he's actually doing weaves so you have to keep this in mind as well so if we take this one for example he will actually go through misidu's attack as you can see is weaving and misidu cannot hit him you can however hit him low so it does have a weakness and it does put him in counter hit state but this is something he can do to try to beat characters that have longer buttons than him he can weave and then sort of do like a straight through punch like this so he can make situations that are disadvantaged for him and his advantage with the right type of reads akigo also has a few more mix-ups of his sleeve he also has access to an unblockable so if he charges this hook right here he can actually make it into where there's an unblockable attack he also has access to this sb uh weave attack which actually crosses through the opponent so he can go for really fast cross-up mix-ups like this this is gonna be really good and really important to his game plan when it comes to actually trying to open his opponent up with certain things like this and he could chain them into the other so he could go into it like that or he can go behind his opponent and sort of do the unblockable like that as well so he can mix them together and do all different types of things as weaving in and out trying to open his opponent up so if you want a close quarter character that has really good damage and of course plays the mind games while trying to open and mix his opponent up then akiko is definitely the character for you so august is going to be your heavy mix-up mode change character that's going to have resources for her to manage so her gimmick is going to be her gear mode so when she goes into this mode she can fly around the screen as long as she has meter to actually spend now she's going to have to manage this because she doesn't want to run out because she does then she overheats so you want to always make sure that you have some but when you do have this you can do all sorts of mix-ups because you can dash cancel any of your normals into a hop that it goes into an instant overhead and you could cancel the overhead attack into another one so you get double overheads really low to the ground like that so it makes for some very crazy mix-up situations because they don't know if you're going to go for double overhead like this or low overhead and then go into another one like this so it makes for some really good situations for her now she does have the problem of her 2b being once again a projectile like some other characters so she could get jumped in on more than like so some other characters but she does have some pretty good air normals to boot so she has this j2c which is pretty good especially for like spacing out so if you're like in a prison phase or you want to back up like that you could do it like that her ja is also really good and because of how her ja actually comes in you could do ja rising and then come down with a jb like this but this is something pretty good for her of course with her bullet she can also have a full screen presence because of the resource so she can have her machine gun and she has the motars as well that she can start popping out just in case the gun isn't enough her persona also has the unique ability of being a counter move so she also can use her persona out in neutral a little bit sometimes to toss it out 
to actually use it to get a counter but it does have that little bit of down period so if they don't hit it they can hit it after it, the shield goes down and that makes it to where it, that's when it becomes vulnerable so just keep that in mind you can't use it as much as you probably would think she also has a really good sweep that's actually low profile very well so it's something even like ken's move so if ken does like this 5b like this uh you can go under this very well uh, like that so very good sweep and is one of her good starters so starting off with this for a combo can be very good for her so if you're not afraid of a more technical mix-up character and want somebody that could really put the mix on an opponent then august would definitely be the character for you so ken can be considered a puppet character much like how shadow labyrinth is also to point out that the dog moves with you you do not move the dog so the dog is always just following you now the bar that you see for the dog there is not for the moves that the dog do but is health so if the dog gets hit a lot then the bar will go down and you have to wait until the dog comes back the dog is very important to ken's game plan as you see he doesn't have a lot of persona cards because he doesn't use the persona much outside of certain things mainly most of his moves are going to be tied to actually using the dog to do certain things like doing the trip or doing uh like headbutt spins or doing the actual uh spin flip that the dog would do this will set up a bunch of different things in different situations so this is going to help him with his pressure it's also going to help him when he's trying to get in it makes it tricky to try to anti-air him because not only does he has a really good uh air button he has a really big air button as you can see you could come in with like a really big button but because he could use konohamaru it makes it hard for you to try to anti-air him because he always has the dog there so he can like have the dog there while he's jumping and then he could come behind the dog so the dog will probably hit you first before you anti-air him and then he'll come in with that as well he also has like i said the other spin moves and stuff like that the persona moves will be coming from his Rekka, so he can do a lot of good confirms from very far away with the dog and because of that it makes it the way he has really good confirms and solid damage and almost like infinite type pressure with the dog when you do it right so it makes it where his pressure is really good the one thing he does lack is a good anti-air so his anti-air 2b is pretty slow it's not that reliable as, as an anti-air so he does lack in that department but as far as his mix-ups when it comes to knocking down with konohamaru and setting up uh some tricky 50 50s and stuff like that or tricky mix-ups he just lacks in the anti-air department so just keep that in mind so he's really good on pressure he's really good with mix-ups and stuff like that really good at far ranges and stuff but he just lacks in the anti-air department but he has no problem getting in and controlling space with konohamaru so adachi is going to be a pretty solid character with some pretty obnoxious buttons especially as jc luckily this button is not an overhead but it's a pretty good button but once you understand how to deal with it he becomes a lot more easier to manage he does have some full screen options like he has this 5d as well he has his 2c which is good at snatching people out of the air he does have a few gunshots which is nothing really crazy to worry about he doesn't have to manage any like bullets or anything like that but he does have a few shots for you to worry about the main gimmick for adachi is going to be his buff so he has this first buff which is going to be heat riser which is this right here so once you get the icon uh with his like face with the up arrow this is going to give him a 10 percent attack boost and a 10 percent defense buff and this is going to be permanent until the end of the match he also has another buff which is for his awakening and this is going to be this right here so this buff is very good and it used to be stronger because he used to be able to do unblockables with the rage but now he doesn't have that so now once he gets this he now can do status elements based on what he hits you with so things like his 5d uh like this this will put you in shock state his uh 5c will do like poison and fear so poison is obviously going to do damage and fear will make every next hit a counter hit so it's going to be a fatal counter hit he also has the ability to do silence with his ghastly well and his uh, other super the one we just talked about uh, the one he just did so he has the ability to do silence and stuff like that so he has a bunch of cool different things he could do as far as the stylus elements like i said he used to have rage as well but they removed that one so a bunch of stylus elements is definitely going to be his big comeback mechanic just being able to make it to where opponents can't do a bunch of things depending on what he do you know you're poisoning them you're shocking them you're putting them in panic and stuff and silencing them there's a bunch of stylus elements once he gets into his awakening mode so marie is actually a very interesting character in this game in the fact that she plays with a weather system so every single round that she's going to have a weather at the bottom right and there's four different weathers that she can actually play and it's going to change each round so the sunny is going to make it to where she does more damage on her non-awakening super it's going to give you about 20 percent more damage the next one is going to be the cloudy weather so this is going to make it to where you have two of these clouds in the air rather than one so if i wasn't inside of the cloudy state but you can see sort of the fog in the air a little bit then i wouldn't get two of those i would just get one 
Now, the rainy one is going to make it to where she regenerates HP. As you see, it has HP regen there. So, she's going to be able to regenerate HP. And uh, one of her supers is going to allow her to shoot more beams. She's going to be able to shoot more beams from one of her supers. And that's going to be the benefits from the rainy state. Now, the snowy one is going to give her more meter. So, this is going to be meter regen. So, it's going to allow her to actually get meter. And she's going to be able to freeze the opponent when she actually hits with uh, things that freeze. So, she's able to freeze the opponent. Uh, in this state as well now marie can actually manipulate the weather as well by doing a super and then holding the button she wants to control to change the weather herself so as you see it's sunny right now if i do it again and i hold a different button i'll be able to change it from rainy to snowy to like whatever weather i want and every button is designated to a specific weather condition so you can choose what weather condition you want to be on for 50 meter. Marie also has some other pretty good things going for her. Of course, she has some items so she can toss items out. So she is basically an item toss character as well. Except for she only has really two and you know exactly what you're going to get by the ones that you press. So you're, you know exactly what items you're going to get when you press these items. And she also has a pretty good DP because of the range that it hit. It actually will beat cross ups and when this DP hits during the cloudy state, it actually creates shock. So you actually can shock your opponent if you're in cloudy state or cloudy weather when you actually do this. So keep that in mind as well. Marie also have access to some zoning capabilities a little bit with these actual like little orbs she can toss out. And she has the ability to manipulate your movement with these sort of like eyes that she can put out. So they'll detonate over a certain amount of time. But they also have a unique ability of being able to be projectiles. So if you toss one out, They'll be able to absorb projectiles for you while you're doing your other stuff. So she can sort of hide behind these and sort of just have that at her disposal. She also has a pretty spammable JC. This is pretty predictable, but it can definitely uh, beat a lot of people early on until people are like realize how to do it. Once people understand how to deal with this, this move won't be much of a problem. But it is a pretty good and nice angled JC that give you pretty easy combos once you actually land it. So much like Teddy, if you want to play a unique character that changes their place to up depending on unique situations, then Marie is definitely a character you might want to consider. So Naoto is going to be a unique trap based zoner that is also going to have touch of death potential. So this character is going to have the ability to set down traps on the ground that are going to be invisible for your opponent to see. And you can put two in the air and two on the ground like that. And you can basically just have them there. Once you have them, you can just set them and you have the ability to shoot uh, bullets in different directions. Uh, why you sit behind it now when you are actually shooting the gun depending on how many bullets you use before you cancel out of it this will determine where the meter actually goes so if i cancel one you see it doesn't take that long depending on how many bullets you use that's how long it will take you to actually replenish your bullets now to also got some pretty good buttons with like her 5d allow her to put her persona behind you in invisible mode and it actually can strike whenever you uh start to let it go like that she also has the ability to use her like 2C, which is also a pretty good space tool. Her 5C is pretty good. Her jump buttons are amazing with her JA being extremely fast and allowing you to come down on your opponent really, really uh, quickly. Uh, her JB is also pretty good and her JC is also really good for air to ground as well. So she has some pretty good air buttons for sure. Of course, with the gun mode, she actually has a couple of different stances to go. So she could go backwards. She can also try to do a quick trick, which is with the SB version and try to catch their opponent off guard to actually roll through them. So this is something you could do with 25 meter to try to catch your opponent off guard to see if you can get a mix up. On top of all of this, Naoto also got some pretty good stylus elements in her toolkit as well. So she has the ability to inflict poison with her persona uh, with some of her moves like this. And she also has a super that will also inflict mute and fear on top of the opponent so they can no longer use their persona and any hit will now become a fatal counter so this is very good for naoto and this move also takes down the counter by six so the counter will start between i believe 12 or 13 and then from there you can bring it down and then the more you bring it down the better for you because once it gets to zero you get access to her instant kill so once you get the opponent to here the counter will turn red and now you can use her super and this super and the ground one will automatically instant kill so pretty much the game plan is to set this up once you have pretty much put the counter down in any situation possible either on block or after a knockdown and force them to take a guess situation where they guess between like your throw or a delay overhead with like your ja like this or a empty jump low and if you hit them with one hit because of the counter being at zero, they will instantly die. 
If you want to play a trap based character with good stylus elements and touch of death potential with also the ability to contest buttons very well in the air, then Naoto will definitely be the character for you. Now, Rise is a character that has a few amazing buttons along with some pretty unique mechanics to boot. So her JB is definitely going to be a very noticeable normal. This is going to be a multi-hitting overhead that has a very huge hitbox on it. Her 2B is also a very large anti-air attack, so very good and is double hitting. So definitely very good for her. And some other things that you're going to want to know about this character, she has two main gimmicks for her. And this is going to be her resonate gimmick and her scan gimmick. So for her resonate gimmick, she can put out these notes and anything that has this sort of resonating thing with it, she can resonate with these and create other hitboxes along with it for the hit. So her like JB can do it, her other special moves can do it like this, or her 5B when she tosses the mic can actually do it. So there's a lot of couple of things that can do this for her. Now her other thing is this scan. So when she scans an opponent, they have this sort of unique stylus element that is on them. And this is going to change the way her actual special moves and things work. So this special move right here, normally just come out like this. But because they have the actual scan on them, you can actually change the way the special move works. And it starts to track them now. So you can use this to come in for a pressure. Or you can use it for like sort of combos and stuff, depending on the version you use or how close you are all sorts of type of things also with the scan it actually changes the way her super works as well so she has a super that she could use um that will actually track because of the scan when it's on the opponent so this will now actually attract to the opponent so normally this will not do that normally this will actually just come out and it will stay on you and you can actually choose to explode them like this or run at the opponent with them but when you have the scan on, it actually just locks them down. So it becomes a much stronger super. Now, there is a cooldown you can see on it. But once you actually have that at your disposal and it's not on cooldown, it becomes a very devastating thing for your opponents to deal with. On top of them having to deal with this type of pressure very, very often because of her knockdown situation, you can just set it up and use it at any time to expend her pressure or to actually create more combo opportunities for herself. And of course, what would Rise be without talking about the DDR super? So she has a unique super that allows her to do DDR. Pretty much it plays a persona song and you actually have to mainly tap the buttons in the right order that you see them in order to get the maximum type of damage. I'm pretty bad at this, but I'm sure there's some people that are really good at this and get the maximum amount of damage from the super. It's actually a really good super and does some pretty good damage when you actually combo into it just right. So if you want to annoy people with a really good jump in and have some really good pressure and you are a DDR master, then Rise will definitely be the idol for you. And lastly, talking about the two Velvet Room sisters, talking about Elizabeth first. Now, this character gradually gains meter because of the SP boost, as you can see. So no matter what happens, she just starts the match just gaining meter. That's just part of the character. Now, the gimmick for Elizabeth is going to be her mind charge super. So when she has 50 meter, she can put herself into awakening mode and this will make her much stronger than what she is normally so this is going to allow her to change a lot of how her special moves work so for example if we take a few of her persona moves the nanos you'll see it has like this quick uh blast super now or quick blast special laser it also has this like really long laser uh now we go back before she goes awakening you see the laser is much bigger it's not as fast and then this one is not as long charging uh there's a couple other things of course noticeable she has this spin move so this spin move right here you see it doesn't pop up like really like that it just sort of pops them up a little bit but the other one when you actually do it if we go into mind charge you'll notice a big difference in how it actually hits so it knocks them really high up in the air and this allows you to uh chain the combos a lot more easier or get different combos that you weren't able to do before so when she is in this mode this is going to change uh her persona moves it's going to change her actual like special moves of these is going to change a lot of the properties of things that she's doing especially her supers and stuff too and she's going to be able to do a lot more different combos and just get more damage opportunities on top of this elizabeth have access to a bunch of different styles elements that she can actually inflict on the opponent so her throw naturally is going to inflict here on the opponent once again it's going to make it to where you automatically get a fatal counter which is very very good and strong in this game also her dp while it also being a throw, is going to be a techable throw. So it's not actually a good DP. It's one of the, like, worser DPs. But it actually can inflict style element that changes depending on how much meter that you have. So depending on the meter that you have, you could get up to, like, five different styles elements. So you could get 
Um, anything from charm, poison, fear, or confuse at 150 meter. So, a bunch of different styles elements in her kit that are usually tied to this, but she can also do other things. Like I said, the fear. She also has freeze in her kit due to this move right here. So, she has quite a few different styles elements that are inside her kit that she can play around with. That being said, she does have the lowest life in the game, so she is a very delicate flower, and she does take uh, a lot to actually pilot because of this, and of course, the uniqueness of how this character actually works that is putting herself in a dangerous state so she is definitely a character that definitely want to be very conscious in how you play her so last thing if you happen to mind charge with elizabeth is not the end of the world because you actually can gain some life back with this super right here now it is a very risky super but if you do get a chance to gain some life with this super because you are an awakening that's going to mean you're going to be taking less damage now because it's all going to be awakening health so as your health bar is at that yellow state take less damage than what you normally would so she's going to be able to take less damage even though she has lower life than normal this is going to be greatly help her actually stay alive much longer while also dealing more damage because of the actual benefits that she gets now with her persona the Nautilus, she's going to have some very basic tools that are very effective like her 5c so this is going to be a very nice hitting move it hits twice it hits pretty high she also has this ice move so she could disjoin her persona like this she can use ghastly well like this so this move right here will inflict fear on the opponent if it hits and it has guard point so their opponent is going to be scared to try to do something on this but if they are scared she also has a command grab that she could do that she could combo off of because the nautilus will throw them near you and just in case you want the opponent near you but the opponents feel a little shy you can actually pull them closer towards you with this Agidine move right here so this will pull the enemy towards you on hit or block and you can start doing things from there and lastly is margaret who is a very strong character that has tools for just about every situation so this character has the most persona cards in the game which also means if her personas break and all her persona cards are going it's going to take her the longest to regenerate she's very persona reliant and she definitely needs her personas for a lot of her game plan so she has three different personas that she actually utilizes she has one that's used for like command grabs she has one that does for like the spear toss and she has one that's used for like her slides and stuff like that now another unique thing for her is she has a lot of forward man, um, moving moves so she has this 5b that moves forward her 2a also moves forward and her dp is also a forward moving uh sort of command grab it's also going to be like her sisters to where it can be tech so this is something that makes her defense a little bit on the weaker side but she uh, makes up for it with a very strong offense so she has a unique sweep that is actually a full screen sweep so it's a full screen low uh you can't really combo it from it that crazily you can get like a sort of a small pickup from it though so this is something that's going to be unique to her but she also has very good persona disjoint so you can kind of just disjoint her persona to death and just keep it out there now this can be punished by the opponent eventually but you can do like command grabs and stuff so if the opponent isn't punishing you kind of just keep it in their face and keep doing different things and once you do this this actually has like a bit of armor on it i believe as well so it makes it to where it's hard for the opponent to deal with this now her 5b is also in the air as a form of her jb so she can actually move pretty good in the air as well so she has access to this this is going to be very good because it could go in conjunction with her very large jc this is a very good button for her jumping in it could use this in conjunction as well with her jc so you can use this whole sequence uh very close to the ground actually so you can do the uh jb into the jc and then right from there you can actually get the jc just like that so even though you land it still get the jc to hit so it makes it very plus so you're very plus in this situation uh from this whole sequence that she could do so this makes for some very crazy sequences that she can set up because she has this j2b overhead as well so she can actually put this in the mix to actually get a double overhead and combo from that uh from her other air special move that will allow her to pick this up so she can always sort of do different things to try to manipulate her actual movement and try to get mix-ups from those different movement situations you can do on top of having like i said this fireball and this air one and then having like command grabs and different ways to just join her personas from her with this full screen approach she also has a really good super to actually approach with uh which is tornado super so she can sort of run behind this so if she really needs to get in this could be a super to do that she also has a pretty good reversal super as well in the form of her awakening super so her awakening super i believe uh this super right here uh, is going to be very good this super hits very high up actually so it's very deceptive it actually hits and it does pretty good damage as well from the combos you could do from it 
last couple of notes of things about margaret is she does have a 2b that is very good especially on single hit on counter hit it leads to very big damage but because of how it actually works and how it actually puts her in the air she actually is pretty vulnerable if you actually whip this attack so her 2b is going to be something that is going to be sort of a committal tool so you do have to use this very sparingly or use it very smartly when you do use her 2b because you can actually make it to where you will die if you actually do miss this and lastly, it's probably one of the most unique mechanics about the character is going to be her Hasso Tobi super. So this super right here, her Awakening super, this is going to do more damage in multiples of eight. So you can see right there, it did uh, 1,800. So as you can see, that combo did 1,238 damage. And this super didn't do the maximum amount of damage because it was not a multiple of eight. So we actually put that down from 17 to 16 hits it would do considerable amount of more damage just like that we got about 500 more damage just because we did it in a multiple of eight so understanding that she has to do combos in multiples of eight to get the maximum amount of damage for her will make it to where she has very precise combos to make sure that she actually reaches the specific numbers that she needs to get the maximum damage within her combos and that pretty much covers everyone for this beginner character overview for persona 4 arena ultimax as always i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did make sure to hit that like subscribe button and let me know what other videos for persona 4 arena do you guys want to see here on the channel if you like anything i had to say drop me a like i greatly appreciate it and if you hear more from me follow me on socials also don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications so you know the next video goes live as always my name is daikin and I'll see you next time. Signing out.